So these days, picking which shiny new smartphone to treat yourself to is more difficult than ever. I'm talking the same sort of level as which family member should I save if my house is burning down, or which of DJ Assault's albums is his best work. And that second one is of course a trick question because they're all pure gold. And if you really fancy yourself one of those super premium flagship smartphones you keep seeing in all those swanky telly ads, but your budget is limited to around the £400 mark, no worries. £400 can buy you a really solid all-round handset. Complete with some killer camera tech, strong performance, even for gaming, all day battery life, the full works. So this right here is my personal pick of the best smartphones you can buy for under £400 in the UK right now in 2020. And I've also done a best under £300 smartphones and a best under £200 smartphones roundup as well if your budget is even tighter. So enough yammering, let's crack on. And if you haven't already, please do put subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. Cheers. So first up is the fresh new Sony Xperia 10 Mark II, a considerably more affordable alternative to Sony's sexy flagship phone. Just 320 quid buys you another blow with Sony's unique 21 by 9 finish, except this time in a more compact form factor so it's even more comfy to clutch. That widescreen display proves perfect for enjoying a blockbuster while you're tucked up under the duvet or blasting through several games of Call of Duty when you really can't be f with work. It's still a gorgeous OLED panel as well, so expect punchy colours and sharp contrast. And audio files are definitely not forgotten either. You've got full support for high-res tracks, and you've got a choice of either Bluetooth or a headphone jack for getting wired up. That Snapdragon 665 chipset keeps things moving along nicely, while the all-day battery life keeps you going even on the longest, craziest days. And while the camera does falter in less than perfect lighting, you can grab some detailed snaps with accurate colour reproduction with minimal effort. And there's also an ultra-wide angle and a telephoto lens on hand for when you need them. Meanwhile, Oppo has just launched its fresh new Find X2 Lite, which thankfully is loads cheaper than the Find X2 Pro. Definitely no need to harvest the kidneys of unwitting orphans in order to afford this bad boy. You once again have a gorgeous Full HD OLED screen, this time a 6.4 incher, and it's proper full-on eye candy, perfect for kicking back with a flick or shredding someone's torso in a violent action game of your choosing. And the latest games play perfectly as well, thanks to the beefy Snapdragon 765G chipset backed by a whopping 8 gigs of RAM. And you once again get that proper gaming mode on the Fine X2 Lite as well in order to hoard resources, block notifications and basically ensure you get the best possible gaming experience. Oppo has also stuffed in a 4000 mAh battery so the Find X2 Lite can keep you entertained all day long, while the quad lens rear camera does a decent enough job for everyday snaps and home movies. Alternatively, there's always the older Oppo Reno 2 which has dropped in price since it was unveiled last year, helped along by the fact that the Reno 3 is now hitting the UK. This 6.5 inch beast offers a full view notch free media experience similar to the Xperia 10 Mark II thanks to that funky shark fin pop up selfie cam. The OLED screen is gorgeous, while the Snapdragon 730G chipset means dependable performance even when gaming. And the 4000mAh battery will easily keep you going all day as well, but the real star of the show here is definitely Oppo's camera tech. The Reno 2 is definitely one for zoom fans on a budget because of the commendable 5x hybrid zoom action, while the main lens proves a match for most conditions and can capture good looking 4K video in a pinch. Now let's shift our focus from Oppo to Google, who's been a bit of a tease in 2020 by simply refusing to launch its fresh new Pixel 4a smartphone for reasons. Thankfully, if you're the impatient type like the rest of us, then the good news is you can grab last year's excellent Pixel 3a for around the £300 mark now. And if you're after a dependable camera phone for not much cash, you really can't go wrong. This thing can capture incredible photos with zero effort, just like its bigger bros. I've done a full dedicated camera review from the Pixel 3a, so go check that out for all you need to know. On top of all that, this is one of the most compact Android phones around at just 5.6 inches, making it pleasingly comfortable to fondle. While the neat, simple, tidy design definitely gets a thumbs up too. And you've still got that gorgeous stock version of Android 10 as well, just like the flagship Pixels, which should be among one of the first to be upgraded to Android 11 later in 2020. And while some may prefer a bigger display for consuming media, the Pixel 3a's OLED screen is admirably crisp and produces wonderfully poppy colours. And you even get a headphone jack too, huzzah! If you do fancy yourself a bigger screen, you can always grab the Pixel 3a XL these days for around 350 quid. And this also boasts a larger battery, while both Google phones are powered by the Snapdragon 660 chipset, which does the job for everyday shenanigans. But do not forget, of course, that the Pixel 4a is still lingering there, teasing us on the horizon, just like the impending apocalypse. So if you can just wait a little bit longer, that will offer some updated specs and a little bit of extra future proofing. Alternatively, for around the 350 quid mark, you can pick up Huawei's excellent Nova 5T smartphone instead. 
This packs surprisingly similar specs to Huawei's P30 flagship phone from last year, but you get a far less terrifying price tag. That means you'll get a Kirin 980 chipset, which may be getting on a bit, but is still more than enough to handle the latest games. And meanwhile, the 3750 milliamp battery proves to offer good returns indeed, so you'll easily have enough juice to get you through a very long, very intense day. And the rest of the Nova 5T setup also impresses, including that 6.26 inch IPS screen, which is crisp, bright, and customizable. Like the Pixel, there are other phones in this roundup better suited to watching movies on the go with their more spacious displays, but I would happily kick back with a flick on this blower any day. Plus, you get the same feature stuffed Emotion UI 10 launcher, which is just as lovable as ever. And like all of the other phones that I featured in this best of smartphone roundup, I have fully tested and reviewed the Huawei Nova 5T as well. So go check out my full in depth review video for all you need to know. And if you're finding right now that your mind is still wandering back to that awesomely funky pop up selfie camera action on the Oppo Reno 2, then you should definitely check out the Motorola One Hyper as well. This Motorola blower costs around the £300 mark and yet it boasts some unique features like this snazzy glow and ring piece found around the back which doubles as a notifications light. And yeah it's only a plastic finish but I rather like the attractive design while the 6.5 inch Full HD Plus display is another winner for movies on the move. Again with a full view notchless finish. And the Hyper even has some Dolby audio action and a dedicated headphone jack for your audio files. And no worries whatsoever on the battery life front as well. This Motorola handset packs a 4,000 milliamp cell and you'll have to really punish the heck out of it in order to drain that by the time you get all tucked up with Teddy at night. And yet the Motorola One Hyper can cope with gaming on the go as well thanks to the Snapdragon 675 chipset and 4 gigs of RAM. No complaints for the camera tech either which is great for everyday use. Once again I've done a full camera review if you want a closer look. So that right there is my roundup of my own personal picks of the best sub £400 smartphones that you can buy in the UK right now. As they have personally tested and reviewed all of these smartphones so I can guarantee that I really like them and hopefully you will too. Of course if I've missed off your own personal favourite then definitely feel free to jump down into the comments and call me a dingus and clue me in. And hopefully it should be exciting times for the mid-range mobile market in the next month or two as well with the likes of the OnePlus Nord and maybe, hey, hopefully that Pixel 4a smartphone launching as well. So please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell to be the first to see my unboxings and reviews of those bad boys. Have yourselves a lovely week. Cheers everyone. Love you.